Okay, hello everybody and welcome to uh, Magic Month. I'm so excited to have everybody uh, listening. We are trying something new with Magic Month, so I just want to make sure you can hear and see. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to uh, Magic Month. Um, let me turn this off. So, hello everybody, and welcome to Magic Month. I'm really excited to be broadcasting Magic Month on Facebook, which is totally a new way of doing Magic Month. So, use the chat, Facebook chat to let us know that you can hear and see and that the technology is working. For those of you that are new to Magic Month, Magic Month is an energetic forecast show that gives you an overview of the month ahead so that you can. Uh, live it in the most flow, most empowerment and most uh, magnificent ways that you possibly can and we'll be sharing the energetic forecast in a moment. Like I said, I'm trying something totally new so uh, let me know if you can hear and see. You might have to click into Facebook to do that. Uh, to ask questions and use the chat box via Facebook, but we'll play with it and see what happens. Um, as you know, I really love Magic Month to be co-creative, and so please, please, please use the chat box to s ask your questions, to share your own insights, your own journeys, to make this a co-creative show. I'm really, really excited about uh, this month's show because we have a wonderful guest, Duke Sayer, who is like the king of empowerment. <laughs> and um, he's going to be talking all about empowerment, which is so important for December. So I'll let you introduce yourself now, Duke. And we'll just, uh, yay. So people can hear and see on Facebook. So yeah, if you are listening via the webinar, you'll just have to use the Facebook uh, chat to hear and see. Thank you. So how are you doing, Dick? Welcome. To I am doing good. Really to Pleased to be here because, um, yeah, your for mic. those... You need to put your mic on. Can you hear me okay? Can you not? Oh. Can you hear me okay, Katie? I'm good. Pleased to be really? here because, um, yeah, for those... You need to put your mic on. Yeah, I can hear you good. Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, so hello, everyone. Those who don't know me, my thing is self-awareness, inspiration, empowerment, and essentially anything that shows up in your life shows up for a reason. And of course, astrology and any kind of forecasting is super powerful because if we can proceed what it's about to slap us around the face by the universe, then we can be a, a lot more ready for it and we can get to work a lot earlier and it can be a lot less painful. So happy to be here with Katie and yeah, it's gonna be good. Thank you so much. And I love that you say a slap around the face because that's what I have a feeling December is going to be like, unfortunately, guys. A good cosmic, good for you, Carly, slap around the face. But we'll talk about that uh, in the forecast. Um, let's begin, everybody, with a meditation just to uh, relax and bring us into ceremony because every time we gather together online, or in person, we are coming into tribe ceremony. So when you're ready, closing your eyes, feeling the muscles around your eyes, relaxing. As you breathe in love and breathe out gratitude, breathe in love and breathe out gratitude. Saying out loud, I call light to myself now. I call light to myself now and feeling a column of light from the center of the universe pouring down into your energy field, instantly raising your vibration and traveling down through your energy field down into the iron core in the center of Gaia and feeling that light bouncing off the iron core at the center of the earth, traveling back up in to the central sun of the universe so that you are held in a two-way flow of life. In a two-way flow of love. And enjoying that two-way flow. 
that runs through all of your being. Feel your energetic body stretching out in all directions around you. Feeling your energy body expanding and your chakras opening as your aura is sealed from top to bottom in white light. Know that only love and light can enter your energy field. As you open your heart to yourself, to the parts of you that are always quiet, and to the parts of you that are always still. Inviting these parts of you that are so often forgotten in modern day life. To be here now, to be part of this journey and ceremony now. Noticing how much more whole you feel when you let the quiet and still parts of you be present. As you open your heart to your own sacredness, inviting your own divinity to be here now. And open your heart to those that you are sharing this webinar journey with. To everybody listening now and in the future. And as you open your heart to them, feel all of these hearts opening to you, welcoming you into circle, welcoming you into presence, welcoming you into this moment. As you open your heart to the earth, to Gaia, who is holding you for this ascension journey of life. And open your heart to Source, who is illuminating all that you need to see in this ascension journey. And open your heart to the guides and spirits that are supporting across all timelines and dimensions and really feeling that community of form and spirit, of light and dark, of earth and source. of you and one. Gathering together. As you open your heart to the month of December, to the last month of this crazy, beautiful one year and open your heart to this webinar and ask, why am I here? Why was I called to listen to this webinar, Jen? To be part of this gathering of thoughts and ideas and energies. And letting the answer come to your heart in thoughts, in words, in pictures, in feelings, in knowing. As you breathe in love and breathe out gratitude, breathe in love and breathe out gratitude. And when you're ready, opening your eyes and coming in to the room. So, thank you to everybody uh, that has joined the webinar and welcome. Uh, if you want to do your uh, chats, you need to do it via Facebook. Sorry, I totally played with technology just before Mercury retrograde. And my guys are laughing at me because, of course, there's a Mercury retrograde about to begin. 
<laughs> and so of course like our chat's gone crazy and everything's gone crazy but i have got the facebook chat up here so if you want to ask questions or comments just use that and um we will uh we will include all your comments i would love to hear how the meditation was i really felt like a huge group of energies with us for this december i don't know if you felt that as well duke but it feels like there is a gathering of great master beings coming to help us with this month of December. We need all the help we can get. We do need all the help we can get. December is going to be a bit of a messy one, guys. Let's uh, begin with the forecast. So uh, for those of you that are Magic Month regulars, you will know that we are doing this one year we're at the end of this one year and this year has really been a moving over from one path cycle to a new path cycle and there's been very very significant moment throughout the year that you will also know that this is a year of the firebird in the chinese calendar it's the year of the rooster but it's a fire rooster and that means it's it's got loads of phoenix energy running through it loads of death and rebirth energy running through it and <laughs> what's happening at the end of this year which in lots of ways doesn't end in december <coughs> from the phoenix perspective it ends in january it ends at the end of the chinese new year and so what is happening is we are crescendoing into the final months of that phoenix death and rebirth process over lighted by this great white white phoenix energies and that means that january is going to be huge january energetically is a huge timeline leap there is the skies are totally aligned for january it's amazing there's two super moons there's eclipses there's all sorts of things going on in January there's this massive energetic gateway portal opening in January and what December is for is getting ready for that so if you think of January as being the phoenix final rebirth and I know I've been talking about death and rebirth all year but like it's just happening loads if you think of January as being the phoenix finally being reborn uh, then December is the death that creates that rebirth so there's a huge amount of death energy in december there's a huge amount of getting rid of ties cutting letting go of everything that you still haven't managed to quite complete and heal there is a huge amount of releasing and a huge amount of kali energy to take you into that death because as human beings we resist death we resist uh, deep transformation and so it's a time of purging it's a time of healing it's a time of releasing and the skies are really 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 aligned for that the first big date in December is the first and only super moon of 2017 super full moon of 2017 which is on the 3rd of December so so if you think of it if you've only got one super moon in a year, the whole the whole year has been gearing up for this one super moon. And the super moon is when the moon appears closer to us in the sky. It looks bigger in the sky. But that means that the energies of that moon are magnified. On that super moon, Mercury retrograde also begins. So I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, but this moon, because it's a Gemini moon, the energies of it are very... It's about truth and therefore it's about lies. And so what it's doing is it's bringing up all of the lies in your life, every way that you are lying to yourself, where everywhere you are deceiving yourself, everywhere you are going to jobs that you shouldn't be doing or in relationships that you shouldn't be in, everywhere that, where you are doing things uh, by lying to yourself, those are going to come up almost like they are burning. They're going to feel so uncomfortable for you. And that's what this moon is going to bring up. On top of that, this moon is working with Mercury retrograde. And a retrograde, for those of you that don't know, is when the planets uh, appear like they're going in the opposite direction 
in the sky. And what happens in a retrograde is that the planet's usual intentions and energies flip. And so you cut, it pulls up the opposites of what that planet usually does for us. And with Mercury retrograde, it sends technology into chaos. <laughs> it sends travel into chaos. It sends uh, communication in all forms into chaos. How, what it asks us to do is go inwards. That's what it's actually asking us to do. The chaos will help bring up the lies that that, that, that full moon is going to bring us, bring up for us. Um, but the, if Mercury is in retrograde, you don't want to fight it. You want to surrender to it. And the way to surrender to it is to go inwards, to actually look at the lies, to not, it's going to bring up all of the resistance and chaos in your life so that you stop so that you don't fight it. So actually you sit with it and you go inwards and you go into the inner world. And this retrograde is from the 3rd of December right through the solstice to the 22nd of December. And it is the last big period for death, for shadow healing, for alchemy of this year. So it's the last big bang of deep healing work. And if you go with it you can create so much transformation in your life you can you can either the the choices and this is what my guides have said about this mercury retrograde especially because it's ignited by this full moon you can fight it and ignore it and you're gonna have a hard time or you can be in your power and work with it and actually then you're not going to have a hard time. You're going to have a peaceful time. You're going to have a, a beautiful inward journey. And you're going to access loads of energy that you can use for manifesting in 2018. And so the choice is yours. That's really what this end of this year is saying. It's like, you're going to be in your power. Or are you going to swim against the current and fight it and struggle and have a very dramatic uh, slap around the face time because you're not listening? So the most important thing to do in December, especially that first part of December, is listen. And I'm going to be giving you lots of different pieces of advice <coughs> at the end for how you can listen the third eye is very very important and at the end of this webinar I'm going to be sharing with you lots of advice on how to help keep your third eye clear and open this particular because of January spiritual energies and because of the golden gateway that is opening up this particular mercury retrograde more than most is very, very third eye based. And so you really want to have a clear, clean, healthy third eye. And so I'm going to be sharing tips and advice at the end, at the very end of this webinar on how to do that. You also uh, want to keep your aura good. You know, everybody that knows Magic Month knows that I'm always banging on about the aura, but more than ever, especially in times like this where people are doing lots of releasing, you do not want to have your aura dumped in. So it is essential, especially between the 3rd and the 22nd of December, that you get light around your aura, that you regularly sage your aura, that you keep your auras nice and healthy and respect the boundaries of your auras. I am going to continue with the forecast, but I just want to ask Duke if he's got any insights about the full moon or anything that he feels. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Kate. You've pretty much covered it all, so I might as well, you know, just <laughs> jump off. No, I, I would I would like to add, it's, it's been very interesting um, accessing and seeing a lot of energies. And over the last two weeks, out of maybe 80 energies, 40 to 60, I don't remember how many exactly, but between 40 and 60 energies, I've literally seen in people's energy this, like, energy of like a breaking through energy and you know the rebirth just being personified seeing that in the energy and things about the change and everything being gearing up and i know um for you guys who followed me okay we've been it feels like we've been talking about this all year especially in november <laughs> the rebirth and then in november everything you do in november and the set intentions of the last new moon is getting ready for 2018 and january and everything else but it really is that and 
seeing it in my own life and so many clients' lives and so many people on exponential healing calls, seeing it in their energies and seeing it in their timelines that really, guys, hold on. Um, it does get better. Mm. And especially especially with the um, retrograde and the full moon, I don't know if you're going to touch on this, game, but you know, tell me, shut up. Around the 3rd of December, making huge decisions, especially when you feel like shit's hitting the fan and you really don't feel very good, avoid those kind of emotional decisions for like maybe three to five days, either side of the third of December because of the retrograde and the super moon together and such a double whammy. Um, just be kind to yourself and just be mindful and just not blame it on the everything that's going on, but just be mindful that it could have something to do with it and just to take your time. It isn't a rush. And the more you can just embrace your feelings, embrace what's going on and just do it step by step. It isn't a rush. You can just do it little bit by little bit by little bit all of a sudden it'll just it'll just unravel and you'll get there quicker than feeling like you have to get it done yesterday and having a kind of frantic and getting in your head around it um just slow and steady and you'll get there faster and you will reap the you will reap the rewards um of doing that i think that's brilliant advice and i think that you know mercury retrograde is not really about making decisions it's about listening it's about you know, humans are very good at making decisions. <laughs> We're not very good at listening. <laughs> and so Mercury Retrograde asks us to listen as opposed to take action, as opposed to make decisions. It asks us to listen. And this this rebirth thing, it's a feminine, rebirth is a feminine word. It asks you to give time and space and to allow and also welcome up all the energy that's coming up. You know, one of the things that's really helped me on my own personal healing journey is rather than going into the panic when the shadow's coming up, when the difficulties are coming up, is to actually be happy that they're coming up because they're releasing, because they're being yeah, get, get it, let get it, go get of. Yeah. Be happy, you know. Birth is messy. <laughs> Like, and there is a massive birth energy happening at the moment. And I know for some of you, it feels like, oh, we're always hitting these ascension gateways. We're always, you know, some some of us have been doing this since 2012. Some of us have been doing this since way before 2012. And it can feel like we're never, we're never ending on it. But the truth is we're not ending on it. Like ascension is an ongoing process and... It is human destination addiction to think that one full moon or one date is gonna is gonna be that is gonna be it. You know, we have breakthrough after breakthrough, rebirth after rebirth, because we're in a time of accelerated evolution, and it can't all happen at once. Like me and some of my friends were talking about how like. When we're all 80, we might actually be sitting there with the herbal tea being like, what's an ascension fun? <laughs> up until then, we're just going to keep going with that process, you know, because it, it, it's a, there's a lot that needs to change in quite a, and, and is changing in quite a short period of time in everybody's lives. And so I think, just... I think, I think on that as well, okay, I think it's important, anyone, anyone who's maybe only been to spiritual development for like the last few years or maybe 10 years or maybe 30 years the amount of growth that we're going through like we're going through the amount of growth in six months what used to take five years five years ago and used to take 40 years 100 years ago you know we, we're, we're being pulled through the hedge backwards whether we like it or not so we might as well just embrace it definitely it's ripped the plaster off quickly time and it is very quick but it does mean that it you know, when it's quicker, it's kind of more painful in the moment. Uh, but I think be happy if you're in a light, you know, if you're in a bit of chaos and confusion and big emotions from the 3rd to the 22nd of December, you know that you're having a big release and you're in alignment. And so you should be happy about that. And I would, if you want to manifest on the full moon, I would really invite, invite the big manifestation, you know, or invite the free manifestation. What if you manifest for whatever's in your highest good? What if you manifest without any decisions? Just be like, send me the life that's in my highest good, or send me the best lessons in my highest good, and clear out everything else that's in the way. Sometimes that's the most powerful manifestation we can do, is to get all of our own intentions out of the way and just be like, okay, I surrender. Give me the best option for myself. 
and it leaves so much openness for good things to come in. Um, and then from the full moon with the Mercury retrograde, it is about doing the shadow work. It is about doing the, the deep looking at your life, about the really asking yourself what's right and what's not in flow, what, what, what's feeling like it's past its cell by day, what, what's feeling like it needs to change noticing what what blocks you're hitting and going into them and and asking what you know what is this giving me this situation in my life what is it giving me why am i still manifesting it how is it helping me what is it giving me and and spending time really asking those questions and also listening to them it's a time i know it's party season but in between parties <laughs> like in between the christmas and work parties if you can give yourself even half an hour a day just to be inside with yourself, that is the way to make Mercury retrograde flow for you and to to make the energies of this time easier for you. Because if you're giving yourself the time to listen, then the lies and stuff and the chaos won't be showing up in your 3D reality it those that that kind of chaos happens in the 3d reality when we're when the universe is forcing us to listen when the universe is having to push us because we're not jumping if we allow ourselves to jump and go okay what is it i need to change then then that's 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 how you have a calm time that's how you have a peaceful time that's how you have an empowered time i uh when i was tuning in to this webinar, I found a really amazing quote that was like, that I think is the quote for December. It's like, make it thy business to know thyself. That is what this December is for. It's about making it your job to really understand and know yourself and know what you are taking with you and what you are not taking with you, to, to give time to the things that are dying, you know, the things that need to be let go of before the end of the year, whether it is addictions, whether it's bad patterns, wh whatever it is. I mean, one of the things that we were in exploring in one of my ceremonies was that, like, nobody wants, to, when things are dying, you know, when a human being's dying, they don't want to be alone. So why are we letting the sides of us that need to die, the parts of our ego that need to die, be alone? Why not give them a nice death? Why not sit with them and listen to them and give them their final words and like give them a nice nurturing uh, in this in this Mercury retrograde process? <coughs> and then what well, I think I think I, th I think yeah. I think as well as a, as a key point as well with the ego, you have to bear in mind, guys, when it comes to ego, what is your ego? Essentially, it is something that has been built in. It's programs that have embedded in your in your consciousness. You know, normally by the age of six or seven, it's kind of fully bedding in with all your programs and how you see the world. And the key thing that the ego wants is acknowledgement. And the more we try and, you know, even as spiritual beings who know we're here having a human experience and, uh, and that part of us who goes, oh, yeah, I know this and I do this and I do that. But actually, the, to, to pay attention to what the ego wants. And even when Katie is talking about scheduling a day, for one of the, one of the things I often talk about is not just giving yourself time off each day is actually in advance scheduling it in because the power that gives your ego is your ego releases its barriers. It kind of relaxes. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm being acknowledged. I'm being taken care of. And all the fears, all the programs, like Katie is talking about essentially fear of change. If you don't want to access your darkness and you don't want to embrace those things, part of you there is a benefit to you staying the same and often is your ego's programs safety measures to stop you getting hurt to feeling how you did as a child whatever it might be or how you how you decided was the best way of you get in love whatever those safety measures your ego is embedded in the more you can give yourself that time the super super powerful as Kay is saying the ramifications of the inner work coming through easier is like is and i, and I notice myself if for whatever reason, maybe I just don't have it in my conscious awareness and I have a week where I don't have the scheduled in time. I look back at the week and I'm like, hang on, I didn't get as much stuff done. 
It seemed to be more of a shit storm than usual. I didn't feel, oh shit, I didn't, I didn't give myself me time. And I didn't let my ego know that I was giving myself me time. And then with the habit loop of the mind, once you start giving yourself that me time and in that me time, things might come through or the rest of the time, your ego then gets in the habit loop of actually, when we take this time off, when we do the inner work, we feel good and we can embrace things and they can shift quicker and quicker and quicker rather than desperately trying to hold on to old programs and make you just feel worse and worse and worse until the universe, you know, bitch slaps you. Definitely. Like the, the, the ego serves you. The ego is trying to help you. It's trying to protect you. It might be full. The subconscious and the ego might be full of old conditioning, but they do want to help. And so if you can give them ways to help, <laughs> then everybody's happy. Everybody is at the party happy. And um, I think a lot of ego stuff is going to help. A lot of ego stuff has been coming up for everybody since since October. You know, we, a lot of people are really facing their ego and and their subconscious in big ways this winter because that's what ascension is. It's It's not ascension is bringing light to shadow it's not just living love and light it's it's illuminating the shadow so that we can transcend it and the shadow is what we can't see and so and this is like the last big burst of it and it takes us right through from the full moon to the new moon the new moon is all about expansion and so how I'm seeing the Mercury retrograde is it's like it's like a crescendo of energies getting stronger and stronger and stronger and then that that new moon almost explodes us into the solstice and the solstice is really really important this year you know it the solstice is the beginning of that golden gateway that I'm talking about in January opening up and and all of that energy that you have been releasing up until the solstice and everything you have been working on throughout the whole year is going to start to integrate. And finally, that process of the alchemy of the whole year is begin to turn into gold in the solstice. So the, the firstly, I'm going to say, just make sure you are in ceremony at the solstice, wherever you are called, whatever sunrise you are going to be at, just make sure that you are in ceremony because it's one of those ascension days that you're going to regret missing out on energetically, cosmically, beautifully. It's very heart based, this solstice. So it's about us really allowing ascension to happen in our own hearts, allowing the year to integrate within our own hearts, inviting the, the heart chakras of our soul into our energetic ch heart chakras. And it's really about allowing that rebirth that we have been working for all year to happen on the inside, inside our hearts. And so that's what the solstice is about. The Mercury retrograde is still happening, so it's still got that energy of going inwards. It's still got that energy of looking inwards, of soul searching, of, of heart breathing, of, of being. And at the same time, there is this massive flash of energy coming in, of ascension energy coming in at the solstice that is like the ignition for the whole rest. It's like when the phoenix starts to go from death into birth. And so that's our that's our solstice moment, which happens just before Mercury retrograde ends, because death always births. Death always comes first. And so the solstice is really, really megaly important for everybody. And I suggest wherever you are in the world, whether it's summer or winter solstice, you you do ceremony, you honor that moment of this this one year completing in oneness by being in ceremony with your tribe by listening to your heart whether it's ceremony with spirit with the earth or with your soul family just make sure you are in ceremony and receiving those energies one of the images i was given for this this month was what we do in our fire ceremonies which is when when we have a fire ceremony we we blow everything out <laughs> We blow out everything you don't want onto the herbs and you put the herbs into the fire and then you end the ceremony by by 
telling the fire what you need to trans all of that energy that you've offered everything you've released you tell the fire what it wants to turn into and that's why there is a manifesting energy happening this month because everything you're releasing is the fuel and the energy for what it's going for what you're going to manifest in the future you're you're recycling it you're letting it become pranic you're doing an alchemical process with it and so that solstice moment is the moment that everything starts to become clear it's that moment when it's like okay we've done the big release of the whole year now we're going to blow what we want into these phoenix fires and tell them what we want and so it's a really good time to uh, manifest, to become, to be born um, into the vibration of who you want to be for 2018 and especially launch yourself into that, that, that incredible January energy uh, activation and uh, portal opening that is coming. And we're also going to... Um, be feeling a shift in the energies from the solstice. You're going to be feeling, from the solstice, is going to feel more like the 2018 energies than it is uh, the 2017 energies. So you're going to notice that shift. And you can, again, choose to launch yourself into it or you can resist it. And if you resist it, it's going to be harder than if you embrace it. From the solstice onwards, it's really about visioning. That's when you come back to, to, to manifesting. That's when you come back into the manifesting flow and really start tuning in to the year ahead and intending and feeling and uh, all of that kind of thing. So um, right through to the, the full moon, uh, which is on January the 2nd. Uh, so it's very, very early on in 2018. That says that 2018 is about fullness, it's about abundance, it's about things arriving because we start with a big uh, full moon energy. So if anybody has questions about everything we've said so far, please do uh, to use the Facebook chat to ask them. And um, I am going to share a little ceremony with you about Black Obsidian, which is really important for this month. But first, I want to ask Duke if he has anything else he wants to share about the forecast for December. I think I think as much as it is about feeling going within, um, personally, I'm a fan of as well. And I think it's underrated within the spiritual space about actually writing stuff down as well. And even though the new moon isn't until the 22nd, obviously that has a lot more intention energy and visualization as Katie was saying and writing stuff down and setting intentions. Even if, even if you are writing down, okay, in the next two weeks or from the 3rd of December, I am going to every single day spend half an hour going within and actually have a plan, actually have, you know, for me, I actually write it down, pen and paper, rather than actually using a diary because it's so much more powerful. Your conscious, your conscious takes note, your subconscious takes note that you were taking this seriously and you're taking that work seriously. And it brings your ego and your soul more into alignment in, in a unity of, hey, we're in this together and let's do this. And there's so much power in actually writing stuff down. And it's just so underrated. And I think a lot of spiritual people will often flow, flow, flow. I feel this. Okay, let me go this way. I feel this. Let me go that way. But when you actually write stuff down, it gives you, and that's what December's about, especially the first week of December, there's so much power in the reflection. And until you've actually written things down, you can look at it and be like, hey, this was what I intended to do. Even if it was just half an hour or an hour of inner work every day, or 10 minutes of pranayama breath work, or a meditation class once a week, whatever it might be, if you've got that written down, you can look back and you can reflect on it. It enables your it is it, so much so powerful for your conscious subconscious and your soul to come into alignment rather than your ego find it again so i wouldn't i wouldn't um yeah i would i would treat it as an experiment and actually write stuff down actually write these intentions of where you let go so you know create a ceremony even if it's just ceremoniously screwing it up and burn it with a cigarette lighter or putting it in a bin but just something you know, the more the more you do this, the more your ego goes. Okay, cool. This is okay, and it and it goes along for the ride. So yeah, that is that is one of my things, my biggest kind of um, gripes with the spiritual world that people aren't doing enough. Because in my eyes, 
of all the energies and universes there to assist you, let's make stuff happen as well. And that, and that, and that includes inner work. Um, because it's very easy when we just kind of float through a week can go by, two weeks can go by, a month can go by, and we're like, what actually happened? And if we've got some kind of rec rec like recorded, oh yeah, that's what I did. That week I was going through hell and I focused on clearing my stuff. Oh yeah, that week I was still coming out the other side. Um, it gives, it gives us, it gives our ego that acknowledgement. It gives ourselves the acknowledgement. And then when we start having that internal dialogue and the parts of ourselves which are saying, you know, I haven't done enough and how can that person I can see on Facebook is selling out their workshops and doing this and doing that. It gives us a reference point and it gives us more awareness. And I, I, I totally agree with you there, Duke. And I think that like writing it down is also taking it, it, it's taking it out of you. Like it's an amazing way to release because it's taking it out of the, the mystery of your own mind and the mystery of your own subconscious and 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 taking it out of you and then of course if if, if you've written something really emotional and you want to burn it you can burn it but and if you've written something really profound then you can keep it but I think it, it's our healing is for the third dimension so you always want to do something that brings it back into the third dimension you are healed on the fifth dimension and above what, what we're trying to do is bring all of this healing down into the 3d and so anything that brings your insights or your thoughts or your healing into the 3d is always going to be a good thing because it's going to mean that the healing shows up quicker in the 3d you know and and the subconscious and the ego and so many parts of you, they speak in ceremony. They don't speak in English. They speak in ceremony. And so they're far more likely to understand the symbolism of you writing down something and burning it than you just saying, I'm releasing this, I'm releasing it. It's like you're speaking that to something that doesn't speak English. Whereas if you write it down and burn it, burn it it's like you're miming <laughs> to somebody that doesn't speak English and they understand it more. You know, so I think that's a brilliant suggestion. The uh, ceremony I've been given for everybody to do, well, not everybody, it's for the people that want to do the deep, deep shadow work uh, for the retrograde, is to work with obsidian. Obsidian is the crystal of the month in December. Um, it's an alchemist crystal. It's lava. It's made of lava. And lava, my guide say, is the menstrual energy of Gaia. It's the period energy of Mother Earth. And so it's a master of death and rebirth. It's the exactly perfect crystal to be using for death and rebirth because it's it's a it's period energy, it's is it's death and rebirth energy. And so um it's very, very powerful because it's got that menstrual energy. It's a very good shadow worker, Obsidian. It brings up the shadows, it shows the shadows, it cuts through the shadows. Rainbow Obsidian or Black Obsidian, either is good. And um what I've been told to do for it, if you're going to do the ceremony, is you have the Obsidian on your altar or in your meditation space in a big bowl of salt. And you speak to the obsidian and you ask the obsidian to clear every single thing that is not of service to you and then when you sit with the with with the obsidian each day you connect to the master obsidian deep within the earth so if you think of like the big king obsidian crystal deep within the earth and you bring that obsidian energy up through your aura and as it comes up through your aura you open your chakra at the very bottom of your aura and you, it and I've connected to this and it almost feels like that chakra becomes hoover like so it's almost like connecting you into the void and it will pull all energy out that's not of service to you and so it, it feels like there's a hoover at the bottom of your aura just sucking out all of the energy that needs to go into the recycling process. And it's an alchemy ceremony. So you are you are offering this energy into the, the earth to be recycled. And so give up 
everything, good and bad, you're offering up the energy of whatever blocks are in your life. My guides have said it's good to do it focusing on one chakra at, the t at a time so you connect to the root chakra. And if you like, you can hold, you can take the obsidian out of the sort and hold it to your root chakra or your heart chakra, whichever chakra you're on. And again, you're just listening, you're asking, you're saying what are the blocks to my best possible life and then listening to what comes up and offering them into the earth and feeling the master obsidian sucking them out of the earth and pulling them out of the earth and and this is a practice that you sh if you want to do it you can do it every day of the mercury retrograde it's going to really clear out your chakras afterwards you put this obsidian back into the salt leave it in the salt for the whole time and at the on the 22nd you then bury that obsidian and offer it to the earth and ask for the earth to give all of this energy you've released back to you in pranic and manifesting form on the on uh, in the january portal so you're basically really inviting this death and rebirth process to happen with you and the earth working with the obsidian energy well, once you finish the ceremony of, of holding the crystal to your chakra for that day, you might feel quite wiped because because when I tuned into it, it does feel like the hoover is like sucking, just like a hoover, it's like sucking all the energy uh, out of you. So after that, you really need to give yourself time to close the bottom chakra down and open the top chakra and let in source light or rainbow energy or light energy to re pranic you, to re-energize you, otherwise you're gonna be wiped. So that's the only kind of energetic hygiene bit of advice. But it the one thing I'll say about this ceremony is it is it's for people that wanna go into the deep shadow. So so it's for people that wanna go into the unseen bits of themselves. It's not really for clearing out the stuff that you wanna work on that you know you need to work on, it's for clearing out everything. So it's for the people that are like, do you know what, I'm ready. I'm ready to have a complete transformation in my life. I'm ready to just see what happens and I'm ready to let go of everything and really explore this Phoenix death energy. You can call the spirit of the white Phoenix to be with you for those ceremonies as well. But that is the ceremony that my guides have given for this month. Um, as an alchemy ceremony and um, as you're imagining this hoover sucking it down you can also connect to the lava layers of Gaia to that fire that feminine transformational fire in the lava and ask her to help you so it's about really connecting into Gaia's own ascension and you can do a lot of collective healing uh, as well if you're if you're feeling up to it so if anybody has questions about that the obsidian will shatter illusions it will it's a it's a to commit to obsidian is to commit to your shadow work in a big way but it will be very powerful if you if you feel caught cool, if you feel like you need that kind of transformation so that's what uh, I invite you to do if you uh, want to. So if anybody has questions about anything, let me know. I have got the Facebook open uh, for questions. Um, let me just have a look. Woohoo, Obsidian, Carmen is saying. Yeah, but you love shadow, Carmen. <laughs> you love shadow work. Um, uh, does anybody have any questions about anything we've said so far? Thanks to everybody that's saying hello. Yes, the solstice is the 21st, and then the Mercury retrograde ends on the 22nd. The solstice, I think, is about 4.30. The actual official solstice in the UK is 4.30. Uh, um, and... Yeah, anybody else have any questions coming through? Not at the moment. Keep typing them in. Thanks for all of your likes and yeses and lovely things. Um, I feel like that this, this month is a real 
fork in the road month though where it's like okay be in your power or don't be <laughs> do you know what i mean like ride it or don't <laughs> you know what i mean like you're you're kind of big enough now as light warriors to be in your your power and that's why i'm so excited the dukes on the show because you are so much about empowerment aren't you Duke? well i think i think um for me, anytime, anytime, um, there's a few things I do whenever it gets too intense, or I feel like I don't want to carry on is, you know, first of all, I just, I've trained my, my conscious mind enough now that, okay, this is really hard, get excited. But also I like to think, okay, um, and here's, here's a few principles I'm going to run your way guys for any of you who, who hasn't heard this before. When I, when, I, when I see the planet and I see Mother Earth, right? Mother Earth has certain things that she wants to do. She has been contracted to be the facilitator for us to come here, and she's doing an awesome job. There are certain energies and certain things dripping down into the consciousness of the collective consciousness. And essentially, on the soul level, it's about whatever theme and experience you want to experience, how do you want to experience it? And the more you can embrace, the more you can just take it on, the more you can be given the more assistance you can be given, the more ideas you can be given, more creativity, more flow, the more you take action with just doing your part of the bargain, which is just embracing your shit, essentially. And, you know, I, m I remember once um, I heard I heard a thing about uh, Michael Jackson calling up his, his manager and saying, I've just had a dream about a song. We need to record it tonight before Prince gets it. You know, and it, and it really, and it, and it really is, that black and white guys and so, so one of the things it's not about it's not about always getting shit done and rise and grind and all that kind of stuff but just at your own pace when stuff is coming up evidently giving yourself the time to be like huh okay let us embrace this and it really does become a cascade and you'll be given access to more and more stuff the more you do that so you know, any, any kind of, any kind of mission. So whenever I kind of feel like I don't want to embrace things, I'm like, okay, the mission, the dream that I've seen, do I, do I, I have been given, I've been given an opportunity by the universe, by the, by the galactic beads, by the planet to go out and do that and experience that. Am I going to embrace that? Or am I going to sit on my hands and let my ego run the show? And so, so for me, and, and again, guys, this can get down to what are your values? So on an ego level, what are your values? Do you really know your values? What is important to you? And if you struggle embracing your stuff, spend five minutes every morning just writing down. So, so let's just say, for example, you realize your values are family or connection. Or let's just say you realize your values are being in shape. It can be, it can be however linear you want to make it, right? Or let's just say you say to yourself, You've made a de decision to yourself or you realize your values. And if you're on this webinar, more than likely, your values are personal growth or helping people. So when you're really going through stuff and you realize you have a dream, you have a vision, something you want to work towards, spend five minutes every morning writing down all the benefits of you embracing your shit and how it's going to help that happen. It's going to help the people you want to help. It's going to help your personal growth. And... The more you can do that, again, I'm going back to the habit loop. For some reason, it's, it's coming through strongly. I should talk about this. Your, your ego will, will start to recognize, okay, this is, this is a positive thing, however uncomfortable it feels. Because state changing and using coping mechanisms, it's just something where we have to continually have discipline to keep on doing. And my belief is that as we go through this journey, it shouldn't be a case as as you go through the journey, it gets harder and harder. In my, in my, in my belief and my experience, it gets easier and easier. And sometimes we do still have programs. If you look at the Buddhist model of stupa, if let's just say you've got a main theme around self-worth, and that is one of the core experiences you want to experience in this lifetime. At a certain point, you might go through a whole load of it and you're like, awesome, that's cleared. I've upgraded. My business is making more money. Um, I'm better. I'm better in my relationships. I speak my truth, whatever it might be. But when your vibration raises a certain amount and you hit that again, you might hit it to such a depth and you're like, what the? I thought I dealt with it. How come it hurts so much? All I can promise you is that no matter how much it hurts, and trust me, I've experienced this in the last two weeks. I had some stuff come up, which I haven't experienced for eight years. And it came up and I was, I was juve over my head in a curved up into a ball, pains in my body. And I'm like, oh my God, I do not want to go there. And I'm like, okay, 
you only get given what you can handle. There's another thing I like to say. God only gives you what you can handle. The universe only gives you what you can handle. And I embraced it. And five, 10, maybe 30 minutes, if I'm honest, later, it had completely released and I was feeling good again. So just know that whatever is coming up is coming up for a reason. But the more, in my opinion, the more you can you can cater to your, to your ego and bring it into alignment, it, the resistance gets less and less and less. And, and many of you on this call, you know, you might have huge egoic programs. You might have masses of resistance, depending where you're on your journey. Get excited because most of the time, the bigger the ego, the bigger the lack of awareness and the, the more awakening that's required. Often you've got such a huge level of oppression that once you've, once you've cleared it, once you've released, released it, once you've re-embraced it, and Kate was talking about the phoenix, once you've, the white phoenix, once you've embraced it, that energy is that much stronger, that more, more powerful because of that intensity that you had to go through. So I guess my message is, you know, wherever the intensity, wherever you're going through, find some way of getting excited, find some way of having that constant communication with the ego, have that dialogue of what is going on. And, you know, I know my journey, I met, I met a lot of spiritual people and they'd be telling me the stuff that at times seemed fluffy and woo woo. And all I needed was my ego to be told, this is the benefit. So have that, have that communication. <laughs> and when the 3rd of December hits, you know, we can, we can have these chats and we can have these webinars and we can know what's coming. But sometimes even then, I know I'm going to be on a plane on the 3rd of December. <laughs> and I know <laughs> that, you know, I'm asking for trouble being higher up and being closer <laughs> and being in the plane. Uh, who knows what's going to hit? Um, but my ego, my ego knows enough now. My personality, my conscious mind knows enough that it can keep on keeping on. And with that, you just create such a snowball effect. And that's when you get such huge transformation in your real world. That's when you embrace something and you, and you get quicker and better embracing stuff. But every day it's just stuff is integrating, stuff is integrating. And without even trying, your external world is changing dramatically. People are Facebook messaging you, asking for stuff, whatever, whatever it is you're looking for. So, and, and, and as for, I guess for me, with, with the end of this year, with it being a lot of releasing, cutting cords, reflection, again, gratitude, acknowledgement of what you've been through and what you're doing. For me, forgive yourself. You know, when you, when you write that list and, you know, you're doing some kind of ceremonious, whatever it might be, like Katie's talking about, or even if it's just, like I said, throwing it in the bin, just something that you're giving it that significance, that honoring, you know, notice, notice how you feel. Notice the parts of the year that you don't forgive yourself. Notice the shoulds in your energy. What are you saying you should have achieved by now? You should have done. Because a lot of us, we make, even if we don't buy into it, we make some kind of New Year's resolution. Even if we don't buy into it, we get excited at the beginning of the year and we make subconscious decisions, even if we're not consciously making a decision. And then as it gets near the end of the year, the sun's not out as much, it's cold, it's wet, it's windy, and we start feeling like we just want to, um, what's the word? Hibernate. hibernate. Yeah, hibernate. And actually, it's decisions you've made. So you make decisions, you make intentions, and that, that energy of that thought form you've created, that you've intended to happen, when your energy meets that energy again, of when you thought it was gonna happen and it hasn't happened, it can affect your energy. Because a thought form which is creating a disparity between where you are and where you were thought you were going to be. So look at your year and look at all the things you thought was going to happen. Look at all the things you thought you should have done, what people expected of you, relationships went down the pan, um, business stuff that didn't work for you. You know, you're stuck, like Katie said, you're stuck in a job that you're not really feeling anymore and you're feeling discontent around it. First thing is forgive yourself. Mm. Every morning, do some mirror work, look yourself have your list of what you've written down that you know you, you you feel like you want to let go or you should have done better and look yourself in the mirror and, and forgive yourself for each of those things i'm sure all of you guys and you know know simple up and up and kind of stuff and mm. um, i'm sure i didn't say that right but you know I even that, again right. yeah i know right but <laughs> even that kind of stuff you can you can start is, is given that constant acknowledgement and your ego is always looking for approval validation acknowledgement your soul energy is just looking for respect so, you know, look after, look after your ego and know that it is okay to not feel good. It is okay that your ego throws a curveball. Um, me personally, I did similar to the kind of meditation Katie did at the beginning of this webinar. I was doing my unity breath uh, meditation this morning and I saw three entities in my heart space. 
and you know let go of that judgment i could have thought oh what those three entities doing da, 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 da. but actually when i then went into their energy i saw that each of those entities were latching on to a different age of me and again that darkness is just coming up and when i connected with the entities you know they've been hanging out with those different aspects of my inner child around some different decisions and energies and by embracing it quickly it was able to dissolve and literally this afternoon i got a real world shift and it was and it was a result of releasing that so yeah a bit of a tangent there but essentially guys don't judge yourself forgive yourself be kind to yourself and i really do think if you haven't tried it no matter who you are where you're in the world just 30 minutes a day of me time even if it's not like spiritual stuff maybe you do 30 minutes of watching some twisted comedy i'm not going to judge you whatever you know whatever it is you want to do you know just by giving yourself that feeling of yeah i did that for me and it wasn't just you crashing out on the sofa watching tv at 10 o'clock at night because you're tired and you've got nothing else better to do and you feel like you want to connect it's actually scheduled in time that is the key thing and i would i would invite anyone try it for a week of just scheduling that time and notice how different you feel and notice how you feel so much more easement and excitement around embracing the stuff because you know you've got that time and it starts coming through when you create that space i think that's awesome advice i really do and i i think you're so right you know the root word of forgiveness guys is to marry and that's the way out of resistance <laughs> is to get married to it and actually resistance is a brilliant thing i love resistance starlight journeys we like there is so much resistance before a starlight journey because the bigger the resistance the bigger the transformation so whenever i'm in resistance i'm really happy because i'm like yeah there's a big change coming that's why i'm try trying to convince myself not to get on this plane now or you know like resistance is just the it, it's the opposing force of the change that is your destiny so like the bigger the resistance the better it is in a way you know and it's a really really good thing i think the more energy just, you have the better really it's all about energy i think so, so i've just seen some of the questions i've just come onto my phone oh. and seen some of the questions should we do the ceremony from the third to the 22nd daily as in the obsidian um ceremony i'm guessing yeah uh yeah, so you can do it, like, I mean, you know, nothing has to happen every day. My guides tell you to do stuff every day, and I asked them about it, and I was like, why does it have to be every day? And they're like, because if you aim to do it every day, you're going to do it five days a week. If you aim to do it five days a week, you're going to do it three days a week. So just aim for every day, but don't worry if you don't manage it every day. Uh, do physical in integration symptoms count as resistance? That is a great question, Lisa. What well, my guide, I'm going to let you answer it as well, but my guide say that the physical is the habitual consciousness. So we have our consciousness and our subconscious and that where they meet is our physical body. And so when you're getting loads of physical symptoms, the habitual consciousness is releasing. And that means that you, you've done a lot of inner work. That's the, that's the habitual consciousness doing the final release of the inner work you've done. So it's, it's not so much resistance as it is release, but I don't know if you have any insights into that, Duke. Yeah, I guess, I guess for me, it, it can also be some of us, like some of us have certain themes that we experience more often than some other people because that is the light that was supposed to shine brighter than some certain things. It can be for physical pain as well. So some of us have physical pain or illness or ailments that it seems to be hurdle after hurdle after hurdle and you're like jesus when is this actually going to go and it's and it's part of our purpose because part of our purpose is to then help people with those physical ailments and the other thing is depending what percentages of your soul comes from different realms so a lot of angelic a lot of souls that have a lot of angelic realm in them will often experience physical pain more as a as a direct way of trying to wake someone up and of course generally a lot of people like you're saying habitual patterns a lot of people it's if they're really really shut off and they're really numb and they're really not in in, in connection with their feelings the last dish resort from their soul the body every part of their being is okay let's give them some really serious pain to really finally actually wake them up that there's something that needs addressing here that's great advice and 
all pain, whether it is physical or emotional, use it as a portal. Go inside it. Make all pain a portal. That is my mantra at the moment. Make your pain a portal. <laughs> like, and find out what's at the bottom of it because that's how you, that's how you stop fighting it and start listening to it and then moving through it. And that's what I think both me and Duke are saying about we we both have quite similar thoughts about how like you do the inner work and then it shows up in your life. And I think that's because we've both experienced it. And so both of us are very in to how do you do the inner work as quickly as possible? And no, so just, because we like it, well, yeah, go on. <laughs> we like it showing up in say, our lives. I was just gonna say the same, the same thing with getting ill. Just because it's winter, guys, I do not, and okay, I don't wanna put any like judgment or shits on it, but I do not expect any single one of you to be in the collective consciousness of, oh, it's winter, being ill. If you're ill, something has happened in your energetic body before you actually got ill physically. And once you, once you get more and more in tune with your body, you will feel an illness coming, even if you haven't got any kind of physical manifestation, and you, you'll, you will release the stuff and then you won't get ill. Or you might have some symptoms kicking in, or you may even get really, really ill to the point where people are saying to you, you're gonna need three weeks off and you're gonna need tons of um, tablets and whatever else. And you can shift it in like 24 to 48 hours by addressing the lessons and really going in on the inner work because that is all it is. It is ruptures normally in your energy body. Or like I said, it could be that your way of integrating, you know, manifests is that way. Of course, if you're heavily integrating, you could be getting ill, but don't ascribe to the whole idea that, oh, there's a cold going around, there's flu going around. Nah, if you, if you get it, there's something within you Everything is a co-creation. Everything is co-manifestation. There is something in you that needs to be acknowledged. And it might just be that you've got the program running that to get ill is to get love, support, attention, care, acknowledgement. It could even just be that. And somewhere in your inner child, you've bought into that program that around, um, I was going to say Christmas, but around winter time is the time to not do much yeah, and you get ill and you can just put your feet up. So check in with those programs and truly feel into um, where that's actually coming from. And uh, you know what? Colds, my guides say, colds clear your connection chakras because it's your third eye, your throat, and your chest. So every time I get a cold, I'm really happy because I'm like, I'm going to become more connected because my connection chakras are having a purge. And so, you know, it's just so much of ascension I am learning as I, as I walk it is about perception. <laughs> Like, it's changing your perception from the 3D way of like, ah, somebody sneezed at me and I've got a cold to, oh, wow, I've got a cold and now I'm purging my connection chakras and it's all going to be wonderful because it's going to make me more connected. And it, it's so much about changing your perspective. It really is, or well, certainly for me anyway. Um, and so, yeah, if, if you if you do, you know, the winter time is about going inward. So, so collectively we tend to do a lot of purging of the connection chakras in the winter so so that's why energetically lots of people get colds in the winter that's what my guide say anyway so so enjoy the purge of your connection chakras if you have a cold um and it is um uh it's, sorry kelly who's a friend of yours uh Duke, Jute was saying she's confused. She's a friend so. of mine. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, okay, good. I'm glad she's a friend of yours. She's confused. So if you let us know what you're confused about, let us know. Just elaborate on what you're confused about. Um, and some people are asking about what about kids who catch everything from nursery and each other. You know what? The collective consciousness is also purging. And kids are very good at purging. <laughs> They're very good at collective consciousness um the collective consciousness when everybody gets ill that's a soul family purging when a whole family get ill their soul family are purging some things are not about your individual path they are about the collective consciousness purging and to me that's what i always see when lots of people are getting ill at once with the same cold it's it's a soul family purging it's a collective consciousness purging i don't know if you've got insights into that too yeah, I think I think as well. Um, don't forget that a lot of well, kids. Uh, oh, uh, if you want to do your. Sorry, I've just gone uh, in. <laughs> <Sorry. started. laughs> 
okay. I was me trying to click Man on the comments. That's my fat right. sausage right. fingers on my new phone. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, th I think for me, you know, a lot of kids as well, they're often trying to take, they're trying to heal their environment as well. So they're taking on a lot of stuff, you know, and, it, and it's, yeah, but that's, that's another topic in itself, but yeah. So it's, it's very much in a kid's natural nature just to take on what's going on around them and try and try and release things for other people. And, you know, it's interesting work with clients and seeing clients timelines, the amount of times you see kids and we, society, what's the word? disregards just how tuned in and switched on kids under the age of six or seven are. And when you see, when you go into people's timelines or people get guided to see their own timeline, just to see how switched on you are as a two year old or three year old or a four or five year old, and just how much you do realize what's going on and you're trying to fix it. You're trying to help it. You're trying to heal it. Um, yeah. And a lot of illness is taken on that way as well. And, um, you know, when you start doing your own shadow work, you realize how much of your own parents' stuff and grandparents' stuff you took on. You know, so much poverty consciousness is because we were brought up by people that were brought up by people that lived in the depression. Like, you know, and so, and we're still carrying that because when we were kids, we we're like, oh, we saw our parents fighting about money and, and we try and take it on and we try and heal it. And then we end up with it. So much of shadow work healing is about that. So much of the deep subconscious healing is about releasing those early years of stuff that isn't even yours. Like it's become yours, but it wasn't yours originally. Um, so yeah, we need to be nicer to our, our, our young ones. I think we need to stop dumping on them. Um, do we, uh, Duke, do you have anything else to say about how people can uh, connect with themselves or, um, just know that show up more. That's well, I think, I think, I think, I think we've talked a lot of this webinar. We've kind of meandered around. So I'm just going to, I'm going to give you guys some bullet points of what we've kind of covered. So for me, you know, at the end of the year, it's all about, it's all about reflection. It's all about releasing. It's all about forgiving ourselves. It's all about acknowledging, being, being grateful for this year and everything we've achieved, letting go of everything we haven't achieved and any attachment we might have around that. And then just in kind of, you know, as the, as the year is drawing to a close, as I said, scheduling, you know, each Sunday night or a Friday, or even if it's a Monday, but I think it works better a Friday or a Sunday, scheduling me time every single day, scheduling exactly when that's going to be, maybe half a day at the weekend as well, just me time, whatever that may be, that has a massive effect. Make sure you write stuff down, plan your calendars. If you want more awareness in life, actually set intentions and around the full moon, maybe it isn't, scale my business 10x but it might just be increase the amount of inner work i do increase the amount of me time increase my breath work wherever it might be i say the next thing we've talked about a lot be excited whatever it is that is going on with it shit coming up for you whatever it might be get excited and there's a lot of there's a lot of energy with this rebirth a lot of people now are feeling the feeling of what am i here to do what am i supposed to do that will come apparent in the next month it will naturally unravel itself the more inner work you do so don't get too bogged down with having to know what you're supposed to be doing. But if you do have anything that you have a natural talent or something you just feel a draw towards or you just feel excited about, just go with that for now because you can't predict where it might lead. It might be that you're excited. It might be, it might be that when I saw the um, Black Friday deal for going to the Dominican Republic at absolute steel and I felt excited, you know, I'm guaranteed there's something serendipitous that is going to happen when I get there. Just guaranteed freaking tear. A, it's my life, but it's just, I followed that excitement. I've never felt excited about going to the American Republic before. So just let go of your mind as trying to always justify and figure out and analyze why you're doing something, where you're going. So just follow the excitement. Next, of course, breathe. Whatever you do, obviously, obviously you've got to breathe, but consciously breathe. And the more you consciously breathe, the more you're going to start to consciously feel, the more you're going to start to consciously notice that you're noticing, notice internal dialogue, noticing what's going on around you. Personally, 15 minutes pranayama each morning as a minimum, because it kind of goes through a lot of different modalities of breath work. That's awesome. Something like a unity breath, which is just connecting with the sun, the sky, and the moon and the earth, something like that, similar kind of thing what Kay did at the beginning of this, um, do, doing that each day, um, 
it's just have huge ramifications and it'll help to shift things on, help you get more connected, help cleanse your body. Help, yeah, it's just, it's just a no brainer. And I just challenge you do that for a week and not notice huge differences in how much you eat, how much you sleep, your energy, your clarity of mind. Forgive yourself, do mirror work. Even if it's just looking into the mirror for 30 seconds and just telling yourself, Duke, I love you. I'm sorry for this, that, the other, whatever it might be, whatever just rolls off your tongue um, or use some kind of hop and hop and no. I probably haven't said that right, but hey, just doing that every single day, you'll be surprised how you start connecting because most of us don't truly actually connect with ourselves. So even just looking in the mirror has huge power. And for those of you who are more intuitive, you'll notice past lives popping up and all sorts. Uh, next thing, acknowledgement to your ego. When you have things coming up in ego, just asking what your ego wants, noticing what it wants. And any resistance that's coming up, ask yourself, what is the benefit to holding on to this? And put a classic example, if you are ill or say you've got backache, ask yourself, what do I not have to do by having this backache? What is the benefit of having this backache? Whose love do I still hold on to the chance of getting? the little me or the little girl or little boy of me of getting by still having this backache when did i first feel this feeling i have all those kind of questions can start truly leading you down the rabbit hole essentially to when you first made these decisions because everything is a manifestation and a decision that you made at some point in time and your ego thinks it's a benefit and when i say ego as well even if it's a past life power universe for all i care that is still filtered through your mind because it's still filtered to give you this conscious experience. Everything is thought forms that your mind is filtering. And the more you get in your heart space, the more you feel, the more you breathe, you're going to be able to permeate those filters and those barriers in your mind that are stopping you from seeing the truth of how things are. Next thing I'm going to say, take, take responsibility. So it's, it's, very, it's very easy to point the finger, to be annoyed with people, to have people trigger you, just be mindful be kind to yourself that everything that's going on with the retrograde the gemini supermoon and everything with the end of the year as well be mindful of that but also take responsibility whatever is currently going on in your life you are co-creating every single every single second of it so take responsibility if you really want things to change it may be painful it may be hard to do your ego might throw its toys out of the pram but the quicker you embrace it and take that responsibility the quicker your life will change Notice internal dialogue. Again, just have those constant chats with your ego mind. I, we, we get told in collective society, we get told at school, don't talk to yourself, or oh, who's he? Who's that imaginary friend? We, we get hit with a lot of these connotations. Shit me, I talk to myself all the time. I'm constantly just sat there just watching one voice saying one thing, another voice saying another thing. Awesome. Have that internal dialogue and notice your thoughts and notice what you're feeling as you hear those thoughts. That's um, a great roundup. Thank you, G. Two more things. Two more things. Two more things. I just want be, to talk be, about your course. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, I was just say, there's a lot of a lot of people right now. I'm seeing in my vicinity, people are coming to coming bubbling up to be let go of. So just be aware of that. That as this as this as the darkness is coming up, as a layer of letting go energy, and it's a super moon, and also um, with the cycles as well, the next eight years being kind of bedded in, be be okay with you don't humanly have to have a conversation with someone or tell them about your life or anything like that. Just embrace your own feelings, and if they're supposed to dissolve out your life, they will. And the last thing is um, get support. <laughs> humanly, we 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 it's. You know, we can sit on a mountain and meditate and say, you know, we're super enlightened and we're connected with the universe and we feel super loved and everything else. But it's a it's a, a hell of a lot easier for our ego and it's a hell of a lot more fun when you realize actually there's people who are feeling just like I am and there's people who are going through what I am and we can talk about it with each other like this webinar. Definitely. Community is everything. Community is what is missing from the world and 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 you know sometimes you need a midwife don't give birth on your own that's the other thing we're all here to midwife each other and so sometimes if you're really stuck you just need a midwife go to a midwife whether it's a ceremony or a one-to-one -one or a friend just go and get midwifed it's not disempowering at all i think that's a great advice you've got a really exciting course duke 
And I've yep. put the, tell us a little bit about it. I've put the link up. Cool. So essentially, I actually, a lot of people don't know, I worked in this industry behind the scenes. I actually used to be a marketer. And I used to promote a lot of speakers, a lot of coaches, a lot of healers. And what I saw was a lot of kind of people going to free workshops and go to a two day advance and go to retreat and go to free workshop and go to two day advance and go to retreat and over and over and over and over again. And I saw a lot of it. It was about the facilitator. The person had to be facilitated by that person at said location for them to get the shifts. And for many years, I couldn't get my head around why people weren't being taught to be self-sufficient. And over the years, without me kind of really focusing on it, I started to notice that every spiritual circle, every course I've been on, I'd outgrown the people that are on that spiritual course or in that circle. And I started questioning, well, why? And I realized two things. First of all, I asked a ton of questions and I always sought to understand, i.e. my ego got the understanding that my soul already knew. And secondly, I was constantly in the space just because I wanted to help of healing other people and constantly being in that space. So what I realized was, um, I needed to create something that would allow people to have that space where they could practice with each other, get used to that feeling of being in their body, being connected, channeling, hearing everything that the client or their body needed at the same time, being able to guide them rather than telling someone that this is where the issue is. This is what needs healing, actually guiding that person and showing them then their ego can be like, okay, cool. That makes sense. And their ego and soul comes into alignment. So I created this course three months super intensive, lots of partner work, lots of practicing and um, bi-weekly calls of me, huge member area and um, hundred plus videos honing down on this technique. And basically I created a script because a lot of, I, I make, maybe Katie, you'll, you'll, you'll share this view or not. For me, there's a lot in the spiritual community. There's a lot of a density around. I'm an empath. I'm tuned in. I'm connected. Da, 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 da. And for me, I don't know about you, Katie, but I have off days. Some days I have days where I can't feel shit. Other days I walk into a crowded room and I'm seeing every little inner child and everything the soul wants me to do. And some days I'm, I'm so unaware I can't put my shoes on properly. You know, so what I wanted to do was, and this is what I've done, is I've created a modality, a script that you can just follow no matter what space you're in. You can have a hangover for all I care and you will still get the result that your buddy or your friend or your client needs. And that is what exponential healing is. Three months, all online. And um, yeah. Sounds awesome. So that I've put the link up for that and um, it doesn't clash at all what I want to tell you about. But because um, Duke's thing starts in January, for those of you that are called to come to ceremony with me or not me with Avebury uh, for a Starlight Soul journey, the last Starlight Soul journey of the year is to Avebury for the winter solstice. Um, it's called Rebirthing the Heart. And Starlight Soul Journeys are, they we do light work and earth work and channeling and portal work and soul work. And we just let the land and the guides and spirit lead us I, on a fifth. You're in the 5D when you're on these journeys and you're just in this 5D crazy connected adventure. It And you help to bring in the energies of the ascension moment and you connect across dimensions through portals and you do loads of healing and alchemy and self work, but it's all combined with the light work and the earth work. So you're really in oneness with the universe. And this particular journey is to integrate the entire year on a collective crystal grid level in yourself to rebirth your heart into its new frequency. It is, a with the starlight journeys they are a soul contract they're a calling so like you if you're going to be an Avery you will know you will feel the call and whether you know how to do this kind of thing or not it won't matter you will just know and you will feel called and we've got three spaces left and we would love some of you guys from magic month to come and join the amazing it's all women at the moment the amazing female tribe in Avery which is the oldest largest stone circle in Europe and the place where my my own path began it's a really really it's a womb so it's a perfect place to be doing rebirth work and it's just magic so I've put the link up for that and I've put the link up for Duke's uh, course so you can do both or either or none of them whatever's in your power uh, to do so I'm also going to pull 
card of the month. These are from CAF's uh, new pack. So I'm very lucky. Oh, this is so perfect. I'm very lucky she lent them to us. Um, it says, prepare for a major event. How perfect is that? <laughs> I told you January is a major event. <laughs> and so December is the preparation for the major event that is January. And, and therefore it is major because uh, every bit of preparation is in some ways more major than the event. You know, like <laughs> it's always bigger energetically really than the event. Death is always bigger than birth in lots of ways. And so enjoy the sacredness, enjoy the preparation, enjoy the very exciting build up and purging. Like I said, keeping your third eye clear is really amazing for December. It's a third eye time and you will be more able to tune in with yourself and understand yourself and use these manifesting energies and ride all of this energy if your third eye is clear. And the, there's loads of ways to keep your third eye clear. I'm sure loads of you have loads of ideas. But <laughs> the first way, which is really simple, is like the quickest way. Put tiger balm on your third eye. Like physically put tiger balm on your third eye and it causes your, your physical third eye to tingle. And then just look at it. Just close your eyes, sending your eyeballs up towards where your third eye is, where your pineal gland is, and just look at it. And that is like the quick way to clear out your third eye. Another thing to do that's really good is drink frankincense water. So there is some frankincense resin, the golden frankincense resin, you can put into water and it, it, it will... Uh, infuse in the water throughout the day make sure you get um, proper frankincense from someone like the frankincense or and just drink it and frankincense does what cacao does is in that cacao opens your heart but frankincense opens your heart and your third eye and if you ask if you intend into the water that it clears your third eye it will really help to open your third eye and then the last thing is this meditation this breath activation that my guides gave me last year and you know what, I think it was for this year. Like they gave it to me last year and I shared it and everybody was a bit like, mm, yeah, okay. And then this year I included it in the channeling course and like everybody was like, that was amazing. And like I did it and I was like, this is amazing. Why haven't I been doing this? And I just don't think when it was downloaded to me or guided to me, we were ready for it. And now it feels like we are ready for it. And so, uh, I am going to end with the third eye activation so you can learn it and experience it. And um, uh, we'll run slightly over so that uh, Duke can say goodbye and I can say goodbye. So what you do for this is you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And then you breathe in. And when you breathe in, you hold your head up towards the sun. And as you hold your head up towards the sun, you imagine your third eye opening to the sun or to source and receiving loads of light. And then you bring your tongue down and you breathe out and you bow your head towards yourself, towards the body, towards the darkness and the great mystery and the womb that is Gaia. And you open yourself up to the darkness, to the womb space, to the inner mystery. And you feel your third eye opening to that. And as you do it, you feel your third eye drinking in the great mystery. And then when you breathe, uh, we've done the breathe out. When you breathe back in, you'll put your tongue up and you open up uh, to bring in the light again. And you just keep going the rounds of that. We'll do that like a couple of times just so you can practice it and ask questions about it. So close your eyes and place your tongue on the roof of your mouth and breathe in. And as you get your head to the top, as you lean your head back, open your third eye and receive the light of source into your third eye. And breathe out, bringing your tongue down, bringing your head down bowing your third eye to your body, to the darkness of the womb, to the great mystery, and opening your third eye up to the great mystery, drinking in the great mystery. 
and breathe out. And then breathe in, putting your tongue on the roof of your mouth, bringing it up, bringing your head up, opening your third eye to source, letting your third eye fill with the light of source. And bringing your tongue down, breathing out, bowing to the womb, the body and the great mystery. Opening your third eye to the darkness of the great mystery. And breathing in, putting your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Bringing your head to face the sun, letting all of that source light energy and you actually feel your third eye getting really hot. And breathing out. Bowing your head as you breathe out to the great mystery. Opening your third eye to the great mystery. Feeling it cool down. And when you finish your out breath putting your tongue on the roof of your mouth and breathing in. Up to source. Opening your third eye to source, letting all of that source light energy in. Breathing out, down to the great mystery. Opening your third eye so the deep peace and the great mystery and the womb energy. And this time as you breathe in bringing your head up to center. And just noticing how your third eye feels. How does that feel? It wakes it up, doesn't it? It clears it. It's a really, so if you do it 108 times, in full commitment, you fully open and activate your third eye. But my guidance is, is that particular meditation is really good for the third eye at the moment, really good for the ascension energies coming through the third eye, really good for keeping it uh, healthy and helping you with the deep inward journey. And so I don't know if you had any insights about that, Duke or anything to share? Yeah, the only thing, the only thing I'd say that I that I love doing again for third eye activation and just in, in general getting coding and information. I know they've got things like SERP trying to block it, but simple sun meditation. You don't have to have your eyes looking at the sun. Just uh, even this morning, um, about ten o'clock, the sun was coming through the back of the flat beautifully, and I was like, awesome. Let me just sit on the bed and just breathing in through my third eye and just seeing all the coding coming in from the sunlight and all the information coming in and then breathing out again and um, doing sun gazing like that with your eyes closed and just sun gazing with the information coming into your third eye. All the ancients used to do it. Super, super powerful for third eye activation and just in general receiving information. And Nadi Shadana, also amazing for the third eye. Amazing breath technique if you Google Nadi Shadana. But, but I'd give some time in part of your you time especially if you're struggling with connecting inward, give some time to your third eye. I think that's the final thing to say on this webinar is give some time to your third eye because that is, that is part of our journey at the moment. That is part of our collective awakening journey at the moment and part of how we become able to listen and the third eye is not exercised at being open when it's not healthy it's harder for us to listen and it's all about listening um does anybody have any other questions thank you for all of um uh, your lovely comments it's been lovely seeing all of the, the comments and um Sorry, guys, uh, no. done it again. <laughs> that QE retrograde is already here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so this is typical That's magic month. Magic month, you've never been on this show before, but, like, I have no problems with technology other than magic month. Magic <laughs> month always has technology problems because it's just that kind of a show. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, it's been a real pleasure having you on the show uh, Duke, Duke has been, uh, sorry, Claire, just so you know, it's Nadi Shadana. 
that's the one where you breathe in and that balances the left and right side of your brain. Nadi Shadana's amazing breath. Um, it's been such a pleasure having you on the show, Duke, and it's been so insightful. And just as I thought it was, was going to be, I'm feeling so empowered and inspired because of your um, amazing guidance. I think, I think you've got this wonderful way of making complica make complicated spiritual things really digestible and practical and possible. And it's a really important gift and so thank you for all that you're gifting to the world with your amazing work and i'm sure your course is going to be amazing pleasure and if anyone who is on this webinar who doesn't know me feel free to look for my facebook group self-awareness with duke just tons of amazing people in there katie's in there as well and we're always just sharing tons of amazing content loads of videos and for me it's just the group that community everyone's just amazing in there yeah, it's a really good group, guys. I recommend it. And um, of course, Magic Months Facebook group as well. If you want to, I tend to post any extra things that we've forgotten on the show or haven't had time to include up on the Magic on Starlight's Magic Month Facebook group. So if you like the energy forecast stuff, that's where to get it. You are all amazing. You are all superstars. Go and rock and roll your way through uh, December and ride the waves. And uh, Magic Month will be back for the amazing announcement of January 2018, <laughs> which is going to be mega. So I love you all. Thank you so much. Love and blessings to Gaia. Appreciate the time, guys. To everyone, to Source. Mwah. Bye, guys. Thank you.